guys this is amrita today we will be discussing about transcription as always let us start our discussion of genetics with the central dogma of molecular biology we know that our genetic material is dna and transcription is a process where this dna is converted into rna anyhow this dna is going to get converted into rna then why couldn't we have this rna as a genetic material this is because this dna is more stable and comparatively less reactive than rna and hence it is preferred as a genetic material over rna whereas this rna acts as a better messenger and that is the reason behind the occurrence of transcription so transcription is a process where the information which is present in the dna is transcribed into the rna in the form of codons codons are nothing but the combinations of any three nitrogen bases and these codons are decoded by the adapted trna molecules and these molecules will add the amino acids according to the codons which is present on the mrna and link all these amino acids together to produce a protein so in this way the gene gets expressed right now let's brush up some of the basics okay the nitrogen bases which is present in the body are adenine guanine cytosine thymine and uracil so this thymine is present only in case of the dna and this uracil is present only in case of rna okay so the rest three bases that is the adenine guanine cytosine are common to both dna and rna the sugar which is present in the rna is ribose and the sugar which is present in the dna is 2 prime deoxy ribose okay what do you mean by nucleoside so this nucleoside is nothing but nitrogen base plus sugar some example of the nucleoside is guanosine adenosine etc nucleotide is formed when this nucleoside combines together with phosphate okay some examples of the nucleotide are ATP and GTP. Next, what do you mean by replica? Replica means producing an exact copy. Okay, that is the exact meaning of replication. So it involves a production of copies. And what do you mean by transcription? It is nothing but copying the information which is present in the DNA into mRNA. And this information, okay, is copied in the form of codons. Okay, and translation is a process where these codons are decoded by the tRNA into proteins, right? How is the RNA different from DNA? So this RNA is a polymer of ribonucleotides, whereas DNA is a polymer of deoxyribonucleotide. So RNA consists of the nitrogen base uracil, whereas DNA has the nitrogen base thymine. So the sugar which is present in the RNA is ribose and the sugar which is present in case of DNA is 2 prime deoxyribose. So this RNA mostly exists as a single stranded molecule. Since it is a single stranded molecule, Chagas rule cannot be applied over here. Chagas rule states that adenosine binds with thymine through two hydrogen bonds and cytosine binds with guanine through three hydrogen bonds. Okay, next we will see about the versatile nature of RNA. So this RNA can perform a wide range of function like this mRNA can act as a messenger, this rRNA helps to form and maintain the ribosome, this tRNA acts as an adapter. So it performs a wide variety of functions, right? So it can be called as versatile RNA. Now let's see the substrate which is required for the RNA synthesis. So RNA is basically ribonucleotide, right? Then the substrates would be obviously nucleotides. So these are ATP, GTP, UTP and CTP. In this picture you have a structure of ATP. See there is a nitrogen base which is linked to a sugar thereby forming a nucleoside and this nucleoside is in turn linked to the phosphate to form nucleotide, right? Okay. Next we will see about the polymerization of nucleotides. Can you see over here we have the GTP. Okay the nitrogen base is guanine so this is GTP. Right and then next to nucleotide which is present is the CTP since the nitrogen base is cytosine. 
see over here the OH group which is present the OH group which is present at the 3 prime end of this guanos, guanosine triphosphate is going to attack the phosphate group which is present at the 5 prime end of the CTP. Okay, so this 3 prime end is attacking the 5 prime end thereby forming a phosphodiester bond in the direction 3 prime to 5 prime. So the direction of the phosphodiester bond is 3 prime to 5 prime phosphodiester bond. So next you see over here that is this 3 prime OH group of the CTP is attacking the 5 prime phosphate of the next nucleotide. So you can see that only this T prime end is keeping on growing while this 5 prime ending end remains static. So this 5 prime end is known as static end. Okay, since it is not attacking anybody, it remains as such, it is known as static end. Whereas this 3 prime end is keeping on attacking, it is known as growing end. So the polymerization of nucleotides always takes place in the direction 5 prime to 3 prime. Since the 3 prime end of one nucleotide attacks the 5 prime end of next nucleotide. Then again this 3 prime is going to keep on attack the next nucleotide. So this 3 prime end is the growing end and the direction of polymerization is from 5 prime to 3 prime. You should always remember this, right? Okay. What do you mean by template? Template means anything which is going to act as a source. So in case of the production of mRNA, one strand of the DNA is going to act as a source. Okay, that is called as a template strand and the another strand is called as a coding strand and it has similar sequence to that of the mRNA which is produced except in place of uracil. So the mRNA is going to have uracil whereas this coding strand will have thiamine in that place, right? Okay, you can see in this picture. See, this is the sequence of a template strand and this is the sequence of the coding strand and this is the mRNA. See over here. The sequences of the mRNA is complementary to that of the template strand and it is exactly similar to that of the coding strand except in place of uracil. See uracil and here you have thiamine. Okay, you can check the accuracy of transcription by comparing it with the coding strand. Okay, what do you mean? As I said earlier, it is not synthesis of mRNA from DNA. So the enzyme involved over here is DNA dependent RNA polymerase. Why do you call it as DNA dependent? Because one strand of this DNA is going to act as a template for the synthesis of mRNA. So this RNA polymerase right in prokaryotes there is only one type of RNA polymerase and in case of eukaryotes there are three types of RNA polymerase. Okay. So first, we'll see about the RNA polymerase which is present in prokaryotes. Okay, the core enzyme of this RNA polymerase basically consists of alpha 2. Okay, 2 alpha, beta and beta dash. Okay, this is the core enzyme. And when the sigma factor is going to bind to it, it is going to form the holo enzyme. Right? Now let's see the functions of different subunits of RNA polymerase. This alpha subunit is going to detect the DNA which is going to be transcribed. This beta is going to cause the polymerization of the nucleotide through the formation of 3' prime to 5' prime phosphodiester bond. This beta dash is going to unwind the DNA and the sigma helps in the recognition of promoter. See, in case of your DNA replication, Okay, different enzymes perform different functions. Like for unwinding, you require helicase. And for the synthesis of the DNA, you require primase. Whereas in the case of transcription, a single enzyme, the DNA dependent RNA polymerase is performing a, all the functions. So this enzyme can be called as a one-man army. Right? Now let's see about promoters. Promoters are nothing but they are set certain specific areas of the DNA which is going to act as a start signals for the initiation of transcription. Okay. Now let's see about the prokaryotic promoters. 
Okay, before that we have to know about this zero point. Okay, this is an imaginary point. So all the region which is present to the left of the zero point, okay, it is known as upstream. Okay, and it is denoted by a negative sign. And all the region which is present to the right of the zero mark is known as downstream and it is denoted by a positive mark. Okay, remember that this zero is an imaginary point. Okay. There are two promoter regions which has been identified in case of your prokaryotes. Okay, one is present at 35 base pair upstream. Okay, this is one region and the another one is the uh, Pribno box. Okay, which is the Tata, which is present at 10 base pair upstream. Right, these are the two promoter regions. Okay. Now let's see the role of sigma. Okay, consider this boy to be the RNA polymerase and this another boy to be the sigma. Okay, this RNA polymerase, as soon as it enters into the DNA, it is seeing such a coiled structure, it is very much confused where it should go. And that is the time where the sigma comes as a savior. It acts as a guide and says to the RNA polymerase, don't worry, I'll help you. So this sigma helps the RNA polymerase in order to find the promoter region. Okay? See? The transcription takes place in three steps, namely initiation, elongation and termination. Okay, initiation in turn takes place by four steps. First is closed complex formation, open complex formation, transcription bubble and promoter clearance. Now let's see the initiation process of prokaryotic transcription. So first the RNA polymerase will bind to the minus 35 base pair sequence. Okay, you can see in the picture over here. The RNA polymerase is binding to the minus 35 base pair sequence. Okay, 35 base pair upstream region. Okay, this is the sequence. Okay, then it will cause the unwinding of DNA at the Tata box region. So this is the Tata box region which I have marked over here. See the DNA is getting unwinded, right? Then the RNA is getting synthesized. So 5 to 10 pairs of base pairs of RNA is getting synthesized. Okay, so the local unwinding up to 20 base pairs of DNA. Okay, is known as transcription bubble. So if the DNA, 20 base pairs of the DNA is going to get unwinded, then it is going to produce transcription bubble. Okay, then this RNA polymerase will move away from the promoter region to the actual region to be transcribed. So this is known as promoter clearance. So first the RNA polymerase will attach to the minus 35 base pair sequence and then unwinds at the Tata box and then it synthesizes 5 to 10 base pairs of RNA then it moves away from the promoter. It involves polymerization, proofreading and protein bridge. Okay, polymerization is nothing but continuous addition of nucleotides through 3' prime to 5' prime phosphodiester bond. Proofreading, okay, of activity of RNA polymerase is not that efficient when compared to that of DNA replication. But I'll say what this proofreading is actually. So, whenever this uh, RNA polymerase is going to add a base, okay, it will check that whether it is adding the correct base which is complementary to that of the base which is present in the template cell. For example, my template strand has a base adenine. Then, my RNA polymerase will add uracil. So, before adding uracil, it will check whether it is good, it is adding the correct complementary base or not. Okay. Protein bridge is where, okay, it ensures that only one nucleotide of the DNA template is exposed to the RNA. Okay. See, I will draw and show over here. See, this is the protein bridge. Consider this to be the protein bridge. Then it will expose only this. This is the RNA which is synthesizing. Only one nucleotide at a time to the RNA. Okay, rest of the nucleotide it is going to just hide. Next, when it moves, again it will expose the next nucleotide. Okay, in this way it goes. Okay, next we will see the termination process. There are two types of termination. One is the intrinsic termination and the another one is road dependent termination. Okay, consider this ball to be the RNA. So, this RNA comes out of this, this maze is the DNA, it comes out of the DNA on its own. Okay. Intrinsic termination is where there are intrinsic mechanisms which is going to terminate the process of transcription and the mRNA is released out of the DNA. Okay. So, this is my 
template strand and this is my synthesizing mRNA. So at a particular region, this mRNA becomes rich in the nitrogen bases, guanine and cytosine. So these being comple complementary, they'll bind with each other to hydrogen bonds, thereby giving rise to a hairpin-like loop, okay, in the mRNA. And in a certain region of the template strand, it becomes, it contains a series of A, which will result in a series of U in the synthesizing RNA which act as a stop signal and the RNA is released off. Okay. So this is the intrinsic ter termination and this does not require energy. Energy is not required over here. Okay. So here is a row dependent termination. So consider the spider web to be the DNA and the man stuck over here is the RNA. So the RNA is stuck up in the DNA and it is not able to come out of the DNA on its own. So there comes the row protein as a savior for the RNA. Okay, so this is rho dependent termination. So what happens as soon as this rho is going to bind to the DNA, the RNA polymerase is not able to move further on the DNA and thereby the RNA, synthesizing RNA is released outside. So this rho dependent termination requires energy. Okay, so most of the termination process occurring in prokaryotes will be your intrinsic termination as it doesn't require energy. Rho dependent termination occurs only in rare cases, right? As it requires energy. Okay. Now let's see eukaryotic transcription. So eukaryotic uh, DNA dependent RNA polymerase consists of three types, right? Type 1, type 2, type 3. Type 1 is involved in the synthesis of ribosomal RNA, 28 small ribosomal RNA, 18 small ribosomal RNA, 5.8 small ribosomal RNA. Type 2 is involved in the synthesis of mRNA and type 3 is involved in the synthesis of tRNA and 5 small ribosomal RNA. Right? There are two promoters which has been identified in case of eukaryotes. Okay, one is present at 25 base pass upstream and this is known as the Tata box and also known as goldberg hognes box and another one is present 70 between 70 base pair and 80 base pair upstream and this is known as the cat box okay see there are some requirements which need to be met for the eukaryotic transcription to occur so activators so activators are those which will bind to enhancers okay these enhancers are dna regions so these activators will bind to it and increase the rate of transcription so the activators are sp1 ctf and atf basal transcription factors okay this involves the tata binding protein transcription factor 2a b f e and h okay and the core regulators consist of transcription fraction 2d which in turn is composed of Tata binding protein plus 14 transcription associated protein. Okay. See, the transcription consists of three steps, initiation, elongation and termination. Initiation in turn consists of, first you need the identification of promoter, then formation of pre-initiation complex, then the synthesis of RNA and then the promoter clearance. Right. See, we can see the two boxes okay as i said earlier two promoter regions one is the cat box which is present as minus 80 region and tata box which is present as minus 25 and this plus one region you have to note okay this is the initiation sequence okay this is where the actual transcription start this is the region okay this in, uh, initiates the region which is going to actually get transcribed okay and this is the region where the helicase activity of transcription factor 2H okay, occurs and the DNA starts to unwind at this point. Okay, at this plus 1 point. Right? You have to remember this. Okay. So, formation of pre-initiation complex involves a series of steps. Okay. First, the Tata binding protein will get attached. Okay. To the Tata box. Then, this transcription factor 2D already consists of Tata binding protein. Okay. It is a part of... Uh, transcription factor 2D, right, data binding protein. Then there will be attachment of transcription factor 2A. This stabilizes the association of transcription factor 2B with the data binding protein. Okay, then the transcription factor 2F will come along with RNA polymerase. This is now only this RNA polymerase is coming and getting attached. Then transcription factor 2 is going to get attached and then the transcription factor 2H is going to get attached, right. So, you have to remember the sequence of all those transcription factors. So, I have created a mnemonic for it. So, first D is coming, then A and B. 
okay so here a panda is doing the dab action so you can remember with dab then the transcription factor f comes along with the rna polymerase so fire consists both f and r so you can remember it with fire and then comes the transcription factor 2e so you can remember it with the help of egg and after that egg is going to hatch so then comes the transcription factor 2h okay you can see over here so this transcription factor 2d okay as it binds to the dna it is going to bend the dna molecule into minus 100 degree so that the other factors can bind and they can work easily together okay so all the factors transcription factor 2f will come along with the rna polymerase then e then h is going to add this h is very important as it has helicase activity also this h okay it will phosphorylate the carboxyl terminal domain of the rna polymerase okay it is going to activate the rna polymerase by doing so right you have to remember this transcription factor 2h and the helicase activity occurs at the plus 1 region okay as i said earlier okay next there will be synthesis of few base pairs okay few base pairs okay few base pairs will be synthesized and then the promoter okay the rna polymerase will move from the promoter region to the actual region which needs to get transcribed the promoter becomes free of the rna polymerase right next is comes the elongation so elongation involves polymerization so polymerization is to formation of phosphodiester bond between the nucleotides next the proofreading activity so proofreading is where you have like uh, it is not as efficient as that of the dna replication so as i mentioned earlier this proofreading activity is also occurring next is termination for termination you have to remember the signal that is a a u triple a okay see over here this is our synthesizing rna and this has a particular region termination signal region a a u a a to which the the cleavage polyannulation specific factors will bind and also there is another region in the rna that is ca region through which the cleavage stimulating factors will bind binding of the cpf cpsf and csf will cause the binding of cleavage factor cf and this will act as the endonuclease and will remove the rna out okay so you have a termination signal a double a u double a to which the cleavage polyannulation specific factor will bind and to ca cleavage stimulating factor will bind binding of these two factors will cause a binding of cleavage factor which will act as an endonuclease and remove the rna out okay okay prokaryotic gene expression is by co transcriptional translation that means transcription and translation is going to occur simultaneously because no nuclear membrane is present in case of prokaryotes so as soon as uh, uh, rna is uh, mrna is synthesized and coming out ribosomes is going to get attached to it and keeps on converting it into protein whereas in case of eukaryotic gene expression the transcription okay translation occurs only after the transcription as they are well separated by both space and time due to the presence of nuclear membrane right so post transcriptional modification of mrna that is nothing but the processing of the hna rna immature rna you call it as heteronuclear rna into mature mrna okay it occurs in the nucleoplasm first there will be addition of polyannulate residues at the 3 prime end okay so this poly a tail will consist of 200 to 250 nucleotides long it is going to, this is done in order to protect the mrna from the 3 prime exonuclease right next you will have 5 prime capping where 7 methyl guanosine is added to the 5 prime end to the unusual 5 5 prime to 5 prime triphosphate bond okay and also normally methylation of n6 of rna residue and 2 prime oh group of ribose is also done in nucleoplasm then you have the splicing so basically this hna rna consists of both coding and non coding regions this coding regions is known as exons and non coding regions is known as introns so all this introns will be removed and this exons will be combined together so the combined together is known as splicing splicing of exons is done to form the mature rna the splicing is an energy dependent process right okay you can see over here you have the rna okay so this is having both what your introns it is consisting of exons and also 
this is your introns okay i this is your exons see here cap is being added at the five prime end and your uh, pollen tail is being produced at the three prime end and the introns are present over here these introns are chopped off and the exons are spliced together to form the mature mrna right okay splice so this is going to mediate the splicing process it basically consists of ribosomes what is ribosome it is nothing but rna present in the form of enzymes and this proteins will stabilize this ribosomes right so these spliceosomes are actually small nuclear riboproteins which is present at the exon intron junction they are uracil rich okay you can see over here they are very much rich with uracil okay eukaryotic mrna is mostly monocystronic what do you mean by monocystronic cystron means gene okay monocystron means one mrna will produce only one protein whereas polycystronic means one mrna is going to produce more proteins okay so in case of eukaryotes all the introns are spliced off a single gene is produced whereas in prokaryotes co transcriptional translation is occurring okay i'll show it in the next picture see over here this is a dna template this example from lac opera this coding gene 1 z coding then you have non coding region gene 2 y non coding region and gene 3 a okay as soon as it is going to get mrna is produced okay it is coming out ribosome is attaching x1 exon 1 is going to produce protein 1 that is lactase exon 2 protein 2 permease and exon 3 protein 3 transesterase so single mrna is producing three proteins so this is polycystronic gene right reverse transcription what do you mean by transcription transcription is a process where your rna is produced from dna reverse means your dna is going to produce from rna okay so the enzyme will be rna dependent dna polymerase or reverse transcriptase rna dependent because rna acts as the template right so this reverse transcriptase was first isolated by temin and baltimore and this reverse transcription occurs in case of retrovirus and also in tumor viruses okay the presence of this reverse transcriptase okay it indicates even the presence of tumor okay so once this rna and dna hybrid is present okay rna and dna hybrid is present this rna is removed from this hybrid with the help of rna hydrolyzed with the help of rna rnas h okay and the one strand of the dna will act as a template and will produce a double stranded molecule right okay from your exam point of view this transcription may come as a essay question okay you have to write write about the initiation elongation termination and also about the post transcriptional modification of mrna this may also come as a short note right and other than this you may get mrna as short note and also reverse transcription with this we have come to the end of the presentation thank you